says that the tools required are going to be a rubber mallet, a 7 16 wrench, and a number 3 Phillips, and a number 2 Phillips. And so I've got my hammer, 7 16 a number 2. In the first step, it says to apply these little rubber feet here with a rubber mallet. Um, it took me a couple of minutes, but I found that this box that looks inconspicuous um, has all of the accessories in it. So all the little pieces, including the little rubber feet. So that's where they're located in case you want to get them all. The next step is going to be securing this back piece here with some screws. And to do that, on this corner, there's no nut. So there's three nuts, except for the one that goes in this corner. This piece here, with the nuts, on three corners, except for this one and it goes just like this. The short leg on that side gets this one without the nut. The bolts that go in there are labeled with an A. So find the bag that's got all the A parts in it. That's what you're gonna use. One nut or one bolt, one washer. This one, which is this one, make sure that the orientation is right because there's another one that looks just like it and it's mirrored. We're going to do this one and we're going to attach it with three screws. The next step is putting on the back support here and we're going to switch it around which I've already done and we're going to secure it with the three nut or three bolts just like we did on the other side making sure that the hole is on this side on the upper side this one right here so here's our piece that's the hole without the nut we're putting it in like this. Now we're going to attach our other leg. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to secure a cotter pin to the axle, which is going to be the wheels. Then we're going to put a wheel all the way through and onto this. And then we're going to slide that through onto there to there. And then we're going to put the other wheel on, another cotter pin on, and then we're going to put the caps on each wheel. The cotter pins are located in bag D. So you'll need to grab another bag for that. This, we're gonna go in through the back side, like that, and put on the cotter pin. And the cotter pin, when you put that on, the first click is where you wanna stop. So like that, don't push it through all the way. 
you want to be able to grab that and now the wheel will stop on that and spin freely okay depending on the model you have you'll have either have three or four slats here at the bottom so what we're going to do is we're going to put those in on the slotted side of the grill which is the far side here and then this one has all the holes that's where we're going to bolt them oh pardon me i'm skipping ahead right here is where we're going to screw them in again with bolts and washers so we're going to go ahead and do that right now here's what they look like slotted on one side and then there are nuts on the other and so we're going to go down and then we're going to lock in and then we're going to swing this end up and then screw it in like this We've turned our grill around here so the wheels are on this side here and when we secure this the next step is the extensions and we want this clip facing the front towards us that's what we want and there's one for each side and they go like that the bolts are pretty far up right here so we're actually gonna want it to sit just like that and we're gonna screw that isn't quite lined up with the hole you can see it's kind of tricky it's not quite lined up if that happens to you on pieces that are like this like extruded or stamped metal what you can do is loosen the bolt right next to it if I loosen this, then this can be adjusted a whole lot easier and it's much more lined up. It's not perfect, but it's definitely better than it was. And now I should be able to get that in. Got it. And then tighten this one back up. Again. The wheels are on that side and we're going to be installing something in these two holes and these two holes over here and that's going to be this bar here and it's the one that's got this little notch out of it and it goes just like this. The next piece we're gonna install is the other one that looks a lot like it, but it doesn't have a notch on it. It's got this little L bend here, and it's gonna go like this, facing the inside here, and it's gonna go on the silver side, on the opposite side right there, and we're gonna screw it in with bolts and washers coming from the other side. The instructions say to remove the pivot pin and the cutter pins from the lid and remove all the packaging material, all this stuff here, from this. And then we're going to lower the grill without the lid, you know, this up here. And then we're just gonna fasten it to the grill, which I moved off to the side over here. 
and that's what we're going to do right now. Your propane regulator and this uh, tube here is going to pipe here. It's going to be going through this notch and then through this. That's where you're going to want that to go. We're going to secure the grill to the stand through these holes with. Uh, gosh, these are terrible lighting. These silvery bolts here. I don't know if I can get a good shot. There we go, that's better. With these silver bolts here. Note to self. Don't over tighten, they don't go in all the way. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna secure the propane hose to right here. There's a small hole and a larger hole. The small hole, it's really hard to see, there's this little pin that sticks out. That goes into the smaller hole and then we're gonna secure it with another one of these bolts and washers through the back side and into the nut that's on the back of this um, junction here. All right. We're gonna secure a bolt and a locking washer on this, or a star washer, whatever you really prefer to call them, these. However, keep this in mind they're beveled so it's kind of like a dome and the dome the the cave concave side should face the bolt so it should go on if that's the cave side it should go on just like that so it should create like a little crown like this on the top and that goes in there and that prevents these from ever backing out because when this tries to back out it grabs onto these teeth and it won't come out there are two there's one that's easily seen here and the other one is just on the other side of this next we're going to secure the burner cover here and it's gonna go on just like this. For the starter, you're gonna want this off to the side over here so it doesn't pinch and get in between here. Uh, and then you're gonna secure this down with three of these, these silver ones. And then you're gonna secure the bottom portion here, right here, with another one of these um, like these tan looking screws just like this pro tip for you if you're doing multiple in a row and they have to be all aligned and this thing moves around really easily very loosely put them in there is a ton of space on each one of these and it helps so it's really easy to align the holes so that way you can start all of them and then you can finish each one of them off very easily and you know that everything is aligned We're gonna do some cable routing here. We've got these starter cables here um, and these little clips. They go right here and you just push them in. That's all you do. And they should lock in place like that. There's two spots on the front, right here and right here. And then there's another spot right in there. These go up 
and they go into the wire holder just like that and then inside here you've got the the propane line in that groove in that uh, metal piece here they're gonna go up and over and inside that groove like this up and then over that groove and then on the inside like that and we're gonna do it with both of them okay now you've got them on the inside right here all right we're gonna in attach the sparker here that's this guy and all we're gonna do is we're gonna mount it just like this into these two holes bottom hole here middle hole here and then this top one my hand is in the way this one right here that one is going to be held or hold another one of these cable wires so we're gonna hold off on that one and we're gonna install this we're gonna install it with one of these self-tapping screws from the outside and into the plastic collar right there. That's what we're gonna do. Installed. We're gonna put that in and then route the wires. So we're gonna just snap that in, just like that. We're gonna put one wire in and the other wire in, just like that. Pretty self-explanatory. Yellow goes to yellow, black goes to black. They are tied together with zip ties. So all you gotta do is just put that on and they just push in, just like that. And you're gonna do it for both of them. And then these here, they go right here on these blade terminals here. And you're just gonna push them in just like this. Okay. For those of you who want to know how to change the battery on this thing, there's your battery. The positive side goes into the module like this. And then the cap goes on like this. And you're just gonna screw that on and just finger tighten. Don't over tighten. You don't wanna blow up that gasket. Okay, we're on the propane side and we're gonna put the side wing on through these bolts and we're going to secure it with one of these plates and these nuts that are provided. We're gonna use our, our wrench for that. This is the one that we're gonna do. It's the one with the grill accessories hooks. goes on just like that. So let me see if I can get a better look. Put it on like that. I don't know if you can see that or not, but bar goes on. And then undo it. I can get it. I'm just finger tightening here because all I want it to do is to not fall on my camera. I can get it without actually seeing it because of course my camera's in my way. Here we go. Alright, so now that's on. I'm going to get the other side and then we'll tighten these down. That's a much better shot because of the light that we have here. So we put it on and then we put this metal bar on and then we put the nuts on. And all we're gonna do is just tighten those up. They don't have to be super tight. We're just gonna be tight enough. Of course, there's no room. There we go. There we go. So we're just gonna tighten that up. I'm not gonna crank these down like a gorilla. We're just gonna tighten them up so it won't move anywhere. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're gonna secure the dropping wing down on and we're gonna use these 
brackets that we have here uh, kind of look like this. One is for the front with an F and one is for the rear with an R. And they go just like that. And they're gonna be secured with a nut. And tighten those up. And this one, the front one, you want it to be loose. So I turned it back about two rotations so I can get the other piece in and then we'll tighten that up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the other side, the one that has this chain attached, and we're gonna put the rear side of this little nub here, right there. And we're gonna attach that right there. And then we're gonna put the other nub on this one, even though it's loose. And then we're gonna line it up and tighten it with our fingers. And then we'll tighten it up with the wrench. I used the uh, locks that are back here, just like when you will have it at the end. I used that to secure it so that way everything would line up underneath here. And on the propane side here, um, we're going to install this. And in case you don't know what this is, it's a propane weight. And so what it does is you're going to put your propane tank on this little hook here. You're gonna slide it into one of the handles and you're gonna lock it down like this. And then depending on how much weight or propane, liquid propane is inside your propane tank, it will pull down on this and, Jesus, spring is heavy. And it will tell you how much propane you have in there depending on your tank. And if it's low, then you know you need to pick up another one and I would probably pick it up if you get to about here and then by the time it gets to here you're gonna realize that your uh, propane uh, is low and you might end up not being able to finish your you know barbecue or whatever but we're gonna go ahead and install it through these two little holes right here with these you know that we've got in a million of through the back and we're gonna go ahead and do that right now The last thing that we're going to do on this one, on the propane side anyway, is we're going to secure these little rubber bumpers. Uh, all this does is prevent the propane tank from banging up against the edge of this thing here. Uh, so from the back, we got our screw, or bolt, pardon me, and washer. It's going to go through, and then it's going to secure these little bumpers. Look at the grill here. Here and here uh, slides this little uh, tray here to catch you know your grease and your drippings and all the nasty ash and gross things that are gonna drop down there and what's kinda nice is that this perfectly fits this little foil container and uh, like these disposable aluminum things um, I will display right here the size of these and so you can pick some more up uh, that are not Weber brand and possibly generic. So that just slides. Oh, it would help if I put it in the right way. There we go. Just like that. Right. Knob time. Okay, these are keyed, so they will only go on one way. There's a flat surface on each one of these on the top. And if you look at the inside, there's a flat surface on the top. It lines up with this nice red piece. All you're gonna do is line it up and push. And that's it. On the inside here, you can see our little drip pan down here with a little foil piece, uh, which by the way, if I forgot, it is six by eight and a half inches. Um, 
right there and we're gonna put a kind of like a drip guard but this will also allow oxygen to come in and feed into the propane and that goes there's a long side and then a short side the long side goes against the back of the grill like that Just like that. There is like uh, tabs on this, so you're gonna have to like push it in, so it kind of like locks in place, and it shouldn't go anywhere. Should be fairly firm in there. All right, the next thing that we're gonna install are the flame covers, and basically what this does is it distributes the heat a little bit nicer, um, makes it so you don't get really, really bad hot spots. Um, also, it prevents uh, build up on the actual burners itself so that way grease and nasty crap you know drips off and goes away and so that way it doesn't get into the burners prolonging the life of your burners um i don't think it's really that important however on the instructions uh they're all shown like this with no little hole and there's a hole on this side um and it's from you know this perspective i don't really think it's that important but i'm gonna do it anyway and i don't really know why but there is a spot for each one of those just like this and again all the holes are facing the left I don't really know I don't really know why I'm doing that you know if I did it this way would it really you know make all the burgers you know terrible I don't know but anyway there's that and the grills oh this is just so exciting all right see you later <laughs> i'm kidding Gonna attach the lid and that's the last step there is one extra step um, I'm going to put on the lid and then we got to put on that uh, little small grate there that uh, you know the little warming tray that we put you know the cheeseburgers on so the cheese will melt that kind of thing so let's go ahead and put this back on and that and we got our you know pins and our little cotter pins and we're gonna put this in and line it up like that cotter pin in again you only go to that first little nub there and then we're gonna go in that sorry about the noise all right let me go get the little warming rack okay in the instructions it goes like this the little feet over here go in this one and this one it illustrates very clearly that if you put anything inside this one the whole grill will explode so don't do that we don't want the grill to explode Just like everybody it has been about two months since I've assembled the Weber grill uh, the spirit 2 and I'm just going to give you my two cents about this particular grill um, it held up very very well against a lot of different things I've cooked chicken I've cooked burgers I've cooked fish I've cooked vegetables all sorts of things on here uh, we've even grilled pizzas on here it's done very well it gets a very good high temperature uh, when you want it 
Uh, the burners are very intuitive. Uh, they're not, uh, if you turn it too high, it's gonna be high. It's not gonna be, um, you know, sporadic or anything. I did, however, notice that there are hot spots. Um, I think that's just with most grills, and sorry, there, you know, we do use this. Uh, but the back here, I, I've almost always noticed that the back is hot on almost every grill I've ever used, but it's hot. So um, if you want to sear something, um, put it towards the back and it'll be good to go. Um, everything is held up very, very well. Um, I haven't had to change out the foil uh, drip pan quite yet, but it's getting there because uh, we've used it quite a bit. Uh, it is summer. Um, anyway, that is about it. I really did enjoy it. Uh, one thing I did note is that my propane tank is starting to become empty and I am going to replace that. This is a lifesaver. I really do like that. So as the tank gets, you know, lighter and lighter, if it's heavy, it'll be down here. And then as the propane gets used, it uh, shows a little bit more. So I will have to get a new propane tank. And now that I know, um, I'm pretty happy that I have that installed. Uh, anyway, be sure to like and subscribe if you have any questions whatsoever. Give me a comment below uh, and I will catch you on the next one.